Well, this is totally not Danzig, and you're listening to the Shred Shack. Greetings, folks. I'm Dan Mack. And this is Chris Mack. Welcome to you to episode 113. I thought that we did 113 already. <laughs> You're asking the wrong dude, dude. Yeah, well, in some episode of the Shirt Shack podcast. <laughs> One of these episodes. <laughs> your premier source of news and uninformed yet heavily biased opinions pertaining to all things heavy metal. Airing bi-weekly on iTunes, Mixcloud, Google Play, as well as on YouTube at youtube.com slash the Shirt Shack and youtube.com slash Adamant's Templum. Let's get started with some old business. I never get that old business button ready. <laughs> Old business is old business, and new business is new business. Uh, we have a cat that's trying to... Oh, get he is so there. gorgeous, that cat. He's trying to get out of my business. Come here. Uh, <laughs> he's a good kitty. There you go. All right, anyway. So last time we were had the podcast, we talked about how um, Steven Adler, former uh, Guns N' Roses drummer, yeah. had accidentally stabbed himself. Uh, but a representative for him denied that the musician tried to kill himself. On Friday, June 28th, a day after he was hospitalized, his representatives told TMZ that the stabbing was not a suicide attempt. It was simply an accident. The rep would not specify what caused the accident except to describe it as a very minor superficial wound. Adler, who the rep says has been sober for several years, is still planning to perform or plan to perform on July 12th on the, at the Golden Nugget in Las Vegas, which is actually tomorrow. So, there you go. But... I mean, how do you accidentally stab yourself? I mean, it's not like he was cutting onions and slipped or something like that. I don't know. Minor superficial wound doesn't sound like hospital worthy. Like, right? There was like a nine one one call or yeah, like, a, sta- you know. a stab in the gut is definitely a hospital call. Well, they tell you not to run with scissors. Maybe it might be the same with knives. Maybe. Just sounds kind of. There hasn't been much said after this, so I'm sure he's just fine. Yeah. All right. So it goes. All right. Well, according to the blast, we talked about this a while back. How uh, Vince Neil was suing his lawyers for kind of like padding the bill, kind of thing. Yeah. But since then, singer Vince Neil has been ordered to pay his former lawyers one hundred and seventy thousand dollars. After he accused him of overbilling him because he is famous, a judge has ordered the rocker to cough up $148,962.50 for fees and $21,207.06 in court costs for a grand total of $170,169.56. Damn. Yes, Backf- sir. Backfiring plans. Yes, sir. Like, pay me. No, you pay me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And that would be it for all the business. So let's talk about some new let's talk about some new business. And this is new business, and we do not discuss new business until next quarter. And with new business we talk about new album releases of which we have none. None. none it's none. finally been a quiet week. And I say that like reluctantly because like every week. Almost every week this year has had some kind of awesome release, so this is like the first time I haven't had to get something in the mail. Yeah, I, I, I haven't looked at the new releases in, in a while, so I don't know if any, what, what came out this week at all. You know what, that is a very good question. Let us find out what came out this week. Well, while you do that, let's talk about what else we've been listening to instead of new releases. Uh, I am actually just very curious. What, what the? No, really, nothing much. Oh, oh, uh, the new Abath album came out last weekend. Pete, where you right? At? Where you at, Pete? Torelli Leone, uh, Rep City. I had to check that out. Three Teeth. Okay. Uh, a band called Bullet is a live album. Oh, Elveson, uh, Dave Elveson's uh, solo album came out. Cool. The companion piece that we've been talking about to his new book. But that seems to be about it. This weekend, 
We've got uh, this in Tomb, O Sleeper, and Suicide Silence. But really, it's all about next weekend, which we'll, I'll be talking about on the next podcast, is the new Sabaton record, The Great War, is coming out. Gotcha. So that would be very cool to check out. All right, so what else have I been listening to? Let's go to Albums of the Day, which I accidentally closed out of somehow. That's silly. Okay. Whatever. This is so silly. Anyway, I have to. Dang. Okay. You trying to pull up your Instagram? Yeah, I, and I'm. Failing miserably. Miserably. There you are. That was weird. All right. So I listened to. I'm going to pronounce this terribly, but I'm going to say Svent Kant. Uh, it's one of our upcoming S5 bands. Speaking of which, when are we doing that? The, the, the fabled S5 episode. Yeah, I was going to say this. This, this We recorded this one a couple of weeks ago, and it's like it's just kind of hanging out it, there. It, it'll, it'll come. <laughs> it, it, it'll come when I'm ready. It's, it's a, it is the Chinese democracy of our episodes. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, so there, there's that one. Um, another S, upcoming S5 band is uh, Constantine. Actually, I think it's a solo record, but this one's cool because it has a lot of really good ve- uh, guest vocalists, mm-hmm. including Speed from um, Soilwork. Cool. Always cool. Some instrumental prog from Phaeton. I believe I that was the last posted episode of the S5 featured them, or was that the one we just recorded? I don't remember. I don't so. remember. Either way, S5 band. Always good. And last but not least on my albums of the day for the last two weeks is Rasputina, Cabin Fever. Yeah, uh, I love them. I they're, saw that and I was like, is that metal? Well, they're right. I would say they're right up there with like uh, Apocalyptica. They're a cello rock band. And I think at times they're heavier than Apocalyptica. So I would say so. Uh, I'm not familiar with their stuff, so I wasn't sure. Oh, no, they're I, fantastic. I, they are They are fabulous. I love them. Uh, and other than that, the last Pat Gessner box of foam we got was a couple of years ago, and I'm finally getting to go through it. And so far, there there's only been one record of note, and it's from uh, XDO, which I forget who is the who is the guy who does that. Is that the guy from Cradle of Filth? That's Cataclysm. Cataclysm, but it's his uh, his uh, what's it called? Warrior metal band, I guess. It's because it's all about war. Yeah, ancient wars and stuff like that. Anyway, it's really, really good. But that's really the only thing that's been of note. Everything else has pretty much sucked. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, there's been CDs where it's like, I listen to like, the first like three or four tracks I'm like, nope. <laughs> gotcha. So, but that's about it, really. I have been listening to random stuff on the iPod and the radio. Um, I don't know what it is. In the last few days, it seems like once every half hour I hear a Guns N' Roses song. Like they're really padding out that set, that that Spotify list, and and they're getting people people hyped up for the ACL. That that and 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 they're 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 pumping up the numbers for their their greatest hits album on oh, on, on the Billboard charts. Oh yeah, yeah, for reals. Yeah, because like it's it's gets it's it's ridiculous how much Guns N' Roses I've heard in the last few days. Um, one one thing I've I've I think I've already said this, but like. Um, you know the station Jack FM. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, their whole mantra is we play what we want, and it's like I, I, I really like their playlist sometimes, because like it's really random and strange. Like it'll they'll play they'll play. They'll they'll go from like Michael Jackson to Foghat to, to what? To, 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 they played Foghat. They played Slow Ride. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and wow. That, that's something you'd expect to hear on. Uh, on uh, the Eagle, on on classic rock, but no, no that's played, pretty they, badass. They, they right played, there, they played Slow Ride. You know what I love when you randomly hear like Deep Purple over and like 
overhead, and it's always it's usually the same song, and it's not "Smoke on the Water," it's "Highway Star," like all the time. I rarely ever hear "Highway Star." I oh my gosh, I've heard it like overhead in three different locations. Really? Yes, and one of them was the uh, Magnolia Pancake House. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, and the other one was H E B. Really? HB has the best playlist, by the way, for classic rock. I'll tell you that right now. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, there was there was a, there was a random song that I heard recently that I was like, wait, what? Um, shit, what was the song? It wasn't it wasn't Deep Purple. Shit, I can't remember. But it was it was one of those it was one of those songs that just comes out of nowhere and you're like, wait, what's going on? <laughs> nice. Where are we right now? Who's who, who's where, when when did I plug in my iPod? So, but um, yeah, I, I haven't really listened to anything particular in the last in the last few weeks, um, just because it's been. It's been kind of like a, a a busy. Either if it's not busy, it's been like quieter than quiet. So yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, let's move along to our normal sections. Um, it looks like we don't have any obituaries. Not in the metal category here, but unfortunately, Rip Torn has passed away. Uh, Rip Torn, Ross Perot, and Vinnie Jones' wife. What? All passed away. I did not know about that one. Yeah. Oh, poor Vinnie Jones. Attack yeah. cardio for everybody now. Yeah. Um, so all three, all three of those were were recent passing. Wow. Yep. That's a shame. Um. We don't have any any random cancer announcements. No, thankfully, thankfully. Okay, so this episode's going going off to a good start because the last episode, every single time I said something like that, you'd be like, "Well, actually." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So far, so good. So maybe either keep your mouth shut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and let things happen, or. So 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 let's go on to general news then. All right. So in general news here. So it seems that Static X has taken a page out of the Men War book here, um, because their show on June thirtieth at Levels in Sacramento and Scranton, Pennsylvania, was canceled. The show was part of the band's North American Trek, which celebrates the twentieth anniversary of Wisconsin Death Trip album and pays homage to Wayne Static. They broke the news of the cancellation in a social media post. And they wrote, We are very sorry to announce that the Static X show at Levels in Scranton, PA on 630 2019 has been canceled. This is an isolated incident resulting from a misunderstanding of the stage size at the venue and its ability to support the production associated with a tour of this size. We know that the fans in Scranton will be very disappointed, as are we. However, this USA tour is as much about memorializing Wayne Stack as it is about anything else. If we are unable to project Wayne's face on the big screen for everyone to see and celebrate, it doesn't feel right. Again, we are very sorry that we will be unable to perform as scheduled, and we hope that we will be able to see the fans in Scranton, PA area sometime in the near future. Tickets will be refunded by the promoter. Anyone who purchased a meet and greet from the band will be refunded immediately. This is nobody's fault. It was an oversight and misunderstanding. At least this was more amicable and civil yeah. than the the Man of War thing. Yeah, yeah, and and it was it was more of a of a it, it was more of a memorial thing. Um, trying to make it more about the more about. Wayne than the band instead of like you know Man of War being like you know we're fucking Man of War yeah at least there's there's a little bit more reasoning to this than than that um so so I mean I I, I hope they, they they go back to the area and with it to a maybe to a bigger venue or something like that and and, yeah. and play but um 
at least they were they were they were okay about it. All right, the next one I think got accidentally cut, like well, copied and pasted, but it ha I'm pretty sure it has to do with um, what's it called, Apocalyptica. Speaking oh. of which, uh, signed to a a new deal with Silver Lining Music, and they are talking about the band's new all instrumental album. Uh, which was recorded over a three-month period at Sonic Pump Studios in Helsinki and was mixed by Andrew Sheps, who's worked with Red Hot Chili Peppers, Lana Del Rey, Metallica, Black Sabbath, and an early 2020 release is expected. Right on. That sounds like it's more like recording news. I think I put it in general news because of the signing. Gotcha. You know, I think that was the main point of the article, but again, it got, um, somehow got cut. Anyway, Jackson has welcomed Volbeat guitarist Rob Caggiano to its family of signature artists. Throughout summer of 2019, sharp-eyed fans will see the Bronx-born guitarist putting prototypes of his distinctive new Jackson model through their paces at Slipknot's Knotfest Roadshow with Gojira and Behemoth, as well as Volbeat's upcoming Rewind, Replay, Rebound World Tour, which will kick off in Europe with support from Baroness and Danko Jones. Cassiano and Jackson will spend summer and fall honing the new instruments for an official debut in early 2020. Right on. On June 28th, CKY vocalist guitarist Chad Gingsberg vented a little bit on social media regarding the departure of bassist Matt Dees from their ranks earlier this month. While Dees seemed cordial in his exit statement, it would appear that his former bandmates were taken by surprise with the announcement. Gingsberg stated Chris... Uh, Chris Way of A Life Once Lost fame will be filling in on bass during the band's set at the Vans Warp Tour 25th, 25th anniversary show in Atlantic City, New, York, uh, New Jersey. And then CKY will then head overseas as a duo for their European UK track. Really? A duo? Right. I think um, in the beginning of his social media rant before he went off on this guy, uh, he was saying he was they were recording backing tracks. So it's going to be... Um, Jesse and and Chad with uh, pre-recorded bass and second guitar tracks. Uh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Oh, way to charge on. True. Very true. Yeah. All right. Lamb of God drummer Chris Adler will join forces with Exodus vocalist Steve Zetrozuza. Violence, ex Machine Head, guitarist Phil Demel, and former Megadeth Black Label Society bassist James Lomenzo for a run of shows in Russia in October under the Hail banner. For, uh, so far, one date has been leaked, October 19th, at the Rock House in Moscow. Now, it's of note here because Adler has not performed with Lama God for the past year because he has been undergoing physical and occupational therapy for injuries he sustained in a motorcycle accident in late 2017. Filling in for him is Art Cruz, who has previously played with Prong and Winds of Plague, and recently accompanied guitarist Mark Morton on his first ever solo tour. So there you go. Right on. Guar will unveil a monument to the band's co-founder and longtime leader Dave Brocky on Friday, August 30th at 2 p.m. in Richmond, Virginia's famed Hollywood Cemetery. Here's an address, by the way, if you want to go. 412 South Cherry Street, Richmond, Virginia. All are invited to the unveiling and a free party the next day, August 31st, at Guar Bar, which is located at 217 West Clay Street, Richmond, Virginia. The party will feature a performance by ROG, which is the greatest Guar tribute band of all time. Is, is it just is it just Guar? <laughs> <laughs> kind of reminds me of um, what was it? Oh my God! I, I know KMFDM did the same thing. KMFDM or um, Narkill from um, oh my God! Why can't I remember the name of the movie? Haggard. Haggard, yes. Where it was just CKY with uh, that guy fronting them. With, with, with Brandon fronting them. I yeah. Think. yeah. 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 That was funny. Narc Hill. Or, uh, what's it called? Twisted Sister performing as Bent Brother. Yes, 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 yes. That's fantastic. Or Metallica performing as anything other than Metallica. 
Like, I, th- I think one of my favorite ones, I think they were called the Spastic Children at one point. Huh. And then they called themselves Dihan at their uh, Orion Music Festival. And Dihan was the, the, the name of the actor who was in their movie. And uh, they performed the whole Kill 'em All record huh. on, like, the second stage at their own show. Huh. I thought nice. that was pretty badass. Very nice. Dihan. Who the fuck's Dihan? All right, longtime Butcher Baby's bassist Jason Klein has announced his departure from the band. He will play two final shows with Butcher Babies on August 1st at Gathering of the Juggalos in Springville, Indiana, and on August 3rd at Pain in the Grass in Auburn, Washington, before exiting the group to focus on being a full-time father to his 11-year-old daughter. Bands aren't doing very well with bassists right now. (laughs) Because nobody cares for them. (laughs) Bass is the foundation of the band. All right, last but not least here, this is pretty badass. Murder in the Front Row, the San Francisco Bay Area thrash metal story, has been received uh, has re- received praise from Rolling Stone and Billboard on San Francisco. Uh, okay, has received praise from Rolling Stone and Billboard to San Francisco Chronicle and the Playlist. After premieres in San Francisco and London, the lauded documentary is headed on the road with screenings at Alamo Drafthouse Cinemas across the country in August and September. There is a San Antonio date here. On uh, September 10th at the Park North Theater. Yes, I saw that. Um, I'm considering. It's a Tuesday, unfortunately. Uh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I know. I looked it up immediately after I saw that. Someone's got work the next day. And someone's got work that night. Yeah. Fuckers. Like, you couldn't do it like the week I have vacation in September, you fucks? Nope. Fuck you. Not for you. Fuck you. All right, well, that is it for general news. All right, so let's talk about our crime blotter. Our crime blotter here. I Hate God drummer Aaron Hill was robbed and assaulted prior to the band's scheduled performance in Guadalajara, Mexico, Sunday night, July 7th. According to Informador. I like that. That's great. Anyway, according to that website, the 35-year-old musician was attacked by three men and a woman not far from the Forum Independence, the venue where the band was slated to play. The assailants reportedly threatened Hill with a knife and left him with a 5-centimeter wound on his left side. He said to be doing fine, although he was unable to play the show. The concert's promoter, Show No Mercy Promotions, said on social media that the members of I Hate God had, quote, a driver at the disposal, unquote, but given the close proximity of the group's hotel to the venue, Hill opted to walk. Steven Adler called the next day. <laughs> Tell me it was an accident, dude. No, that 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 sucks. Like the the no reason given or anything. No, like, like, no. He was just robbed. He was probably he was a pie stick up kind of thing. Yeah, and I. I mean, you hear plenty around here about stolen equipment and stuff. Right. But, like... There was one that I think I missed out on on reporting here is, uh, I think it was Mike Pike of High on Fire um, apparently had his very customized pedal board stolen um, by an airport security guy. <laughs> or, like, a baggage check guy or something like that. It was it was something stupid. Like, ridiculous. Like, why? It was just, I don't know. Uh, the, the, well, why would you risk your job for that? Right. Uh, All right, are you ready for Metallica breaking shit? I'm I'm just imagining like uh, uh, an airport security guard opening up the like the suitcase and seeing the pedal board, and it being like the scene any scene in Pulp Fiction with the fucking uh, the suit the briefcase the, the briefcase, and then him just being like, "Oh, we happy," <laughs> <laughs> and just walking off with it. I just kind of think about that scene every time anybody opens a briefcase. <laughs> In all honesty. Are we happy? Oh, we, oh, we happy. happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. I just recently watched uh, Kingsman, both of them. Yeah. And I, I, I forget how much I loved Samuel L. Jackson in the first one. Yeah. He's so hilarious. Yeah. And, yes, Elton John kicks all sorts of ass in the Golden Circle. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's one of he the best He stole players. the fucking movie. Anytime he told anyone to fuck off was gold. <laughs> Fucking gold. Oh my god, it was amazing. I think one of my favorite parts is uh, uh, 
um, when one of the 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 robot dogs is going after Harry Hart. Yes. And he and it's, he like he's about to like bite him, and then suddenly like you just see his like Elton John's face come into the screen. Like, <laughs> hey. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> In the whole get up, oh my god, it was so good. Uh, and I love the fact that it's like, I'm a big fan of your music and all, but I really want to hear some Gershwin. <laughs> oh, so good. Okay, anyway, Metallica's breaking some shit here. All right. According to the music industry trade magazine Polestar, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, Metallica, and Kiss were among the top-earning hard rock and metal tours of the 2019 mid-year reporting period, which covered a six-month range from November 22nd, 2018 to May 22nd, 2019. So here are the grosses from select hard rock and metal artists. So we have Polestar's 2019 mid-year worldwide tours. Number four is Metallica, earning $69.7 million. Kiss is at number seven with 58.1. Trans-Siberian Orchestra is at number eight at 57.3. Roger Waters is at number 48 with 11.9. Disturbed, 51 and 11. Aerosmith is at 62 with 9.2. Shinedown is at 75 with 8.1. And Def Leppard is at number 100 with $5.6 million. That's worldwide tours. They also have a mid-year North American tour list here. Uh, Kiss is at number 5 with 58.1. Trans-Siberian Orchestra is at number 6 with 57.3. Metallica is at number 12 with 41.7. Disturb is at 35 at 10.6. Aerosmith at number 4 with 9.2. Roger Waters at 44 with 8.6. Shinedown's at 48, 8.1. Nine Inch Nails at number 74 with 4.8. And Greta Van Fleet. Oh, wait, there's a few more after here. Greta Van, Greta Van Fleet at number 80 at 4.5. Five Finger Death Punch and Breaking Benjamin at 4.4 is number 81. And number 96 is Bring Me the Horizon with $3.6 million North American tour. I guess Disturbed has yet to go on a European tour. I guess so. Because, so far. Because it... Uh, Ten point six million to eleven million, like they probably did some festivals across yeah, the way. Yeah, I guess that makes sense because I was gonna say like they that that should be a little bit more for them. Do that or like yeah, this is from November twenty second to May twenty second. So um, if anything, disturbed probably. I think disturbed is across the pond right now because mm-hmm. I believe recently they were in Tel Aviv, Israel, mm-hmm. where. Um, Dave Draymond performed the Israeli national anthem. Mm-hmm. So, I believe they are across the pond now. Right on. And of course, Metallica's numbers are staggering in um, worldwide. You know, plus twenty million dollars in uh, across the pond there, because they they spend more time over there. Sons of bitches. Anyway, I, I digress. <laughs> All right, so anyway, Forbes has released its 2019 ranking of the world's highest paid celebrities, and Metallica and Guns N' Roses are both made the list. Metallica, which didn't rank in 2018, took the number 21 spot this year with 56, uh, $65 million. Guns N' Roses also failed to make the list last year, but landed at number 71 in 2019 with $44 million. The annual Celebrity 100 ranks the world's highest paid celebrities in music, sports, and entertainment according to what they made over the last 12 months. uh, For those who are curious, Taylor Swift is still the highest paid celebrity in the world, earning $185 million over the past year. Just saying. Not that. I mean, it doesn't surprise me, but I don't care because it's Taylor Swift. So yeah, I've but, I've actually heard uh, I've actually finally heard full songs from Taylor Swift, and I don't like them. <laughs> you know what? I find myself like again not going out of my way to listen to her, but not going out of my way to not listen to her. Like I don't mind some songs, although 
there's this one that's just awful right now. It's like her newest single. It's terrible. No, uh, I, I, I can't, I can't get behind any of them. Well, remember I listen to Top Forty when I'm driving for Uber, so it's, yeah. I listen to the same shit over and over again. It's weird. Is I, I don't know why I've, I've been listening to, um, some modern radio for like not not out of choice, but out of situation be it, be it at work or at other work it's at work, <laughs> work, either, work. E- either job um and the song by Katy Perry um I kissed a girl uh-huh I've heard that song so many times in the last week and a half that I I I, ne- I never heard the full song before. I was gonna say you've heard it more now than you heard it when it was popular. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, I, it's like I don't know what happened, but like just somehow I hear the song almost like every other day now, and I don't know why. You know, it's a shame. Is like, I listen to this one station here in town, and you know they keep playing the same shit. I feel bad. I don't feel bad, but. I just, I just think it sucks that they keep on playing the same old Lady Gaga song, Poker Face, when she has, like, newer stuff yeah. and better stuff. Yeah. You know, it's just, what the fuck? I know, that's another one that I, I never really heard the full song until recently. Um, and I'm not I'm not actually crazy about it. I, I'm, not, I'm not too crazy about any of her early stuff. Like, the stuff that made her popular to mm-hmm. begin with, but the stuff that she's released after that, mm-hmm. where she actually, like, you know, writes songs and plays piano and is, like, actual, like, you know, music, mm-hmm. I think is, is far better. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so we have nothing for your favorite section here. No, no, nothing for feuding. Nothing for feuding. Unfortunately, we have nothing for alcoholica. But we do have some merchandising, merchandising. And I have to say, by the way, mm-hmm. I've watched Spaceballs more times in the last three weeks than I have in like the last five years, only because William is obsessed with the movie now. That's cool. He's obsessed with it. It's great. It's so awesome. <laughs> and as, as I also find it funny when you look back on what was considered PG at the time and what's considered PG now. Spaceballs is a PG movie. But there's an entire scene where I think the word asshole is used at least 20 times. We ain't found shit. Yeah. I mean, they drop so many swear words in this one, of course, without the F-bomb. And, like, I think that's the reason why William likes it. <laughs> it's because of all those swear words. Yeah, there was a thing I saw recently that said um, um, Lord of the Rings, the trilogy, was... PG thirteen, which technically means it, it should have one f bomb in it. Where would you put it? And it had a whole bunch of options, like a whole bunch of little things about where you could possibly put it. <laughs> and it was, it was like, fine then, fuck your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> I have no fucking memory of this place. <laughs> this place is old, old as fuck. <laughs> Fly, you fucks. <laughs> 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 so it had a whole bunch like that. And no. I'm, and I'm laughing my ass off. <laughs> Return of the King. He turns around to the, for fucking Frodo. <laughs> <laughs> you can have my fucking axe. <laughs> <laughs> my fucking precious. <laughs> oh, it's better. Uh, there's just all the possible places. Oh my God, tree put... beard. I'm no fucking tree. <laughs> All the possible places you can put one, one f bomb. Oh my god! <laughs> yes, golly, that'd be fantastic. All right, let's go on. Oh, a fucking end. <laughs> All right, merchandising here. The popular vinyl collectible that uh, the popular vinyl collectible company Funko best known for its big-headed pop figures, has reimagined Metallica guitarist Kirk Hammett as two universal monsters, which is Frankenstein's monster and the creature from the Black Lagoon. The two limited figures, which are the first in the new Kirk Hammett collection, will be made available starting July 13th as part of Hammett's It's Alive classic horror and sci-fi art from the Kirk Hammett collection horror movie Exhibit at the Royal Ontario Museum in uh, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. 
Only 1,008 pieces of each figure will be made available as part of the exhibit, which features 90 works that provide insight into, into the evolution of horror and sci-fi films and how they have played upon contemporary societal fears. The exhibition features film posters as well as collectible electric guitars, monster masks, and sculptures. So pretty much this is Kirk Hammett's wife telling her to get that shit out of my house. <laughs> All right, a Pantera vulgar display of power 3D vinyl limited edition is available now for pre-order. Officially licensed, each is hand-painted, numbered, and comes with a certificate of authenticity printed on the back. Created to capture some of the most iconic images in album art, this 3D vinyl is 12 inches tall and 12 inches wide and is unique and this unique collectible can be desk mounted or wall mounted. This edition is only going to be produced to number 1,992. I guess the year it came the year out. came out. Uh, I'm just imagining like a vinyl thing with a giant fist coming out of it to punch you in the face. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. To recreate the album tile cover all the time. Every day. All right. Are we ready to rock here? We got some recording news. All right, let's do some recording news. Actually, before you go on, um, oh, since yeah. we usually do crowdfunding tracker and and um, I didn't do this in general news, um, there there was an update on um, the um, release of A Sound of Thunder's new um, mm -hmm. Blu-ray. Uh, and it turns out that their singer, Nino, was in a uh, car accident. It's there. Oh, it's there. Is it? Yes. Oh. It's there. I'm, I'm on top of things. You're on top of things. I'm on okay. top of things. But they have, uh, as of, like, from what I've seen, they haven't done a crowdfunder yet. No, they haven't. They haven't. Uh, but we'll get there. Yeah. Okay. We'll talk about okay. it. Okay. So then we'll get to that. I'm on top of shit. Okay. We'll get to that's, it. That's why I do this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep working on the S5. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay. Suicide Silence. Now, there's a long backstory to this recording here. They headlined a special benefit show in support of Mental Health America of Los Angeles at the Observatory in Santa Ana. The band has announced that the live recordings from the night will be released under the album Live and Mental on July 12th via Nuclear Blast, which is tomorrow. Live and Mental was produced by the band while mixing was handled by Josh Gilbert, who has worked with Woven War and As I Lay Dying. Hosted by Sirius XM uh, metal DJ Jose Mangan and co-presented as an Affliction Metal Night, the band brought together the community to raise funds for the Mental Health America of Los Angeles. The sold-out show raised nearly $17,000 towards the creation of a homeless health care center where people living on the streets with mental illness can come and get their needs met. Right on. Super cool. Baby Metal will release its third album, Metal Galaxy, on October 11th via Ear Music. The follow-up to 2016's Metal Resistance will reportedly include four singles that have been released over the course of the last few months. Papaya, Starlight, Distortion, and Elevator Girl. I have heard none of those. Neither have I. I have actually never heard a single one of their songs. I've just heard that they are very good. You know, despite like the whole niche thing they have going on here. Yeah. All right. Devin Townsend has announced that he's been in the studio overseeing a 5.1 surround sound mix of his latest album, Empath, at Armory Studios in Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. That would be interesting to hear because there's always so much going on in his, uh, his album. So. Yeah, imagining it in 5.1 surround sound. Right. Prong is spending July in the studio with producer Chris Collier. Um, I guess he's worked on their albums before, No Absolutes and Zero Days. Not particularly familiar with those, of course. Uh, recording two tracks for a new EP to be released in the fall. The songs will be mixed by Terry Date, who has worked with them on The Cleansing and Rude Awakening. Right on. 
Psychotic Waltz. There you go. Has signed to Inside Out Music for the worldwide release of its first new studio album in 23 years. Psychotic Waltz's fifth full-length disc will be recorded with engineer Ulrich Wild and will be will be mixed by Jan, uh, Jens Bogren, who of course has worked with Opeth, Fate's Warning, and Arch Enemy. An early 2020 release is expected. Re-releases of the entire Psychotic Waltz catalog will follow through Inside Out Music as well. well I know we were talking about this recently. Um... Because we were talking about Devin Graves, and I was wondering what he's been doing since Shadow Theory. I forgot that they reunited um, Psychotic Waltz. Um, I thought it was just for t- for a tour, but apparently it's for an album too. First album in twenty three years. It's badass. Yeah. Badass. Yeah. It, it's another album for me to pick up. Yes, sir. Visions of Atlantis will release a new album titled Wanderers on August thirtieth via Napalm Records. 2019 marks the 30th anniversary of the cult's seminal album, Sonic Temple. To celebrate the anniversary, Beggar's Archive, spelled A-R-K-I-V-E, will release the cult, Sonic Temple 30, on September 30th, uh, to September 13th. It will be released as a deluxe box set and a five CD set. Plus, label re- will reissue Sonic Temple on double LP, which has been out of print for over 20 years. The sets, uh, the sets both contain limited edition, uh, limited release demos in addition to previously unreleased tracks. I still need to see this band live. I need to listen to more Cult. I only yeah. have the one album. They are, they are quite good. I just love Ian Asbury's voice. Yeah. And, I, and like, it's just, it's just really good. And like when he was like fronting the doors for a while there, it worked so well. So mm-hmm. just the combination of that is just fantastic. Yeah. All right. Hashtag they no, see no, me no, rolling. No, 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 no. Yes. No, no, no. They see me rolling. <laughs> uh, Motherfucker. You, you came up with that, didn't you? you damn right I did. <laughs> I was anyway. Gonna, I was going to say if that's copy and paste... And whoever wrote it is fired. <laughs> <laughs> I am not fired. I win. I win. The puntastic fin- adventures of me. Anyway, Foo Fighters, because, you know, Grohl and everything, have released a surprise live EP titled 00950025. The three-song effort features ex- elusive, quote-unquote, elusive live tracks, namely the performances of For All the Cows and Watershed from the band's headline set at 1995's Reading Festival, as well as a live recording of Next Year from a 2000 concert in Melbourne, Australia. For, for no reason at all? They just... Th- that's what they do. They just do stuff like that. They should just release a full-length live thing from, from that, that, that time period. I think they should release a fucking full-length record of the time that we saw them. Because that concert was amazing. Uh, I'm sure you can get a bootleg of it. I'm sure. But still. Cat, do not try it. Oh, he's going to try it. (laughs) (laughs) It was like, hey, what you doing? Cats being cats. Oh, go ahead, Edward. Go, Go for it. He's really thinking about it. Uh, let's keep going. Yeah. Motorhead guitarist Phil Campbell will release his debut solo album, Old Lions Still Roar, later this year via Nuclear Blast. The disc, which has been in the works for more than five years, will include guest performances by Rob Halford, Dee Snyder, and Alice Cooper, among others. Other guest musicians that will reportedly appear on Old Lions Still Roar include Chris Fenn, who was in Slipknot, Benji Webb of Skindred, Matt Sorum of Guns N' Roses, and Whitfield, Whitfield Crane of Ugly Kid Joe. That sounds pretty good. Right? Ace Frehley will release Origins Volume 2, the sequel to his 2016 collection of cover songs that inspired the former Kiss guitarist, in October via Entertainment One. The disc, which will feature guest appearances by Lita Ford singing Jumpin' Jack Flash and Cheap Trick's Robin Zander, Singing Humble Pie's 30 Days in the Hole is currently being mixed. I wonder what the set list for that one's going to be like. Right? I mean, you got Jumpin' Jack Flash. So that's the right And Humble Pie. Well, uh, I'm not very familiar with Humble Pie, but, I mean, 
A little, gun, a little, little Rolling Stones never hurt nobody. Exactly. All right, Lacuna Coil will release their new album, Black Anima, on October 11th, worldwide through Century Media Records. Right on. And it was also announced that the two singers of Lacuna Coil will be appearing at Looney Tunes on Long Island for really? a signing. Yes, sir. Ah. Yes, sir. That's a pay big. That's a pretty big grab for them. I heard nothing about that, but that's awesome. It was because it was funny. It wasn't just announced by Looney Tunes themselves. It was announced via the the band's Facebook page and Century Media itself. Hmm. If you guys, anybody who's a fan of our podcast who has not been to Looney Tunes Records, do yourselves a favor and get there. All right, ready? Yep. The good that men do, and this is a total hashtag copy and paste. This is word for word. The ABCs of Metallica, an alphabetical history of one of rock's heaviest bands, Metallica, will be released on November 26th via Permuted Press. Featuring hard rocking rhymes and bold illustrations, the ABCs of Metallica looks back at the remarkable history of one of rock and roll's most celebrated groups. Each letter of the alphabet highlights a significant moment along the band's journey. From their humble garage days to their numerous classic albums such as And Justice For All and Master of Puppets to biographical information on the band members themselves. The book is co-authored by Howie Abrams who has worked, who has done the merciless book of metal lists and hip-hop alphabet with illustrations by Michael Caves McLear who participated in Metallica's Obey Your Master exhibit in 2012. A portion of the proceeds from the book will benefit Metallica's All Within My Hands Foundation, which is dedicated to creating sustainable communities by supporting workforce education, the fight against hunger, and other critical local services. A is for alcoholica, by the way. I, I hope I, I I'm just wondering what is going to be under F or P for fire or pyro. <laughs> A picture of Metallica of James's like melted face. Yeah. Just, just fire. And 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 C is definitely for Cliff Burton. More than likely, yes. Cliff Burton. All right. Now we do have a crowdfunding tracker. We'll go through the one that actually has a crowdfunding first. Uh, Australian metal musician and radio personality Lachlan Watt has been diagnosed with brain cancer and is undergoing treatment for it this year. Facing down eight to nine months of radiation chemotherapy after having already undergone surgery this spring, he will be left unable to work for some time and the GoFundMe uh, has been launched to help keep him afloat financially. In addition to running a label, hosting a heavy metal show on Triple J and booking numerous heavy acts in his native Australia, Watts has fronted a bunch of heavy uh, bands, most notably filling in for Thy Art Is Murder on tour during C.J. McMahon's exit from the group. Now, they have a goal of fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So far, they have raised twenty five thousand six hundred nine dollars in the last ten days. Wow, not bad at all. Nope, not, not bad, bad at all. all. Yeah, some of these uh, donations have come in within the last 16 hours. Well, the most recent one being 49 minutes ago. So, it is up and running. All right, so I put this in as a temp entry. I was waiting for them to to do the GoFundMe thing, but um, there is a... This is from the uh, Sound of Thunder Facebook post. I just copied and pasted it. And it says, Legion of Thunder, Nina was injured in a car crash the other day her car was hit by a bus rolled over with her inside and her pelvis was broken in three places she is alert online and putting on a strong front but her injuries were severe uh the day that they posted this i forget which day it was but she went uh she underwent surgery to put metal pins in her back making her even more metal than before something that we didn't think was possible we are told she will also have to be fitted with a halo and will not be able to walk for at least six weeks. We are not sure of the long-term implications of her injury. Uh, thankfully, she is insured, but she will likely still face a huge challenge in the form of deductibles, inadequate physical therapy coverage, and loss of income due inability to work her day job. Uh, so far, again, there has been no crowdfunding or no GoFundMe page set up, 
but we will be on the lookout for that if it does. Yeah, they they say in there specifically that they're they're considering it. Yes. So. And considering them and their success with GoFund, like with with uh, crowdfunding, crowdfunding um, I wouldn't be surprised if they do it. And if, if it's very successful. Yeah. Exactly. Um, now I have nothing this week for things I want. Okay. I do. Okay. Here's what I want. I was going through, like, you know how Facebook does memories? Yeah. And I, you know, I usually, when I see something that I really like, I, I post it and say, oh my God, I can't wait for this to happen. And I just want these guys, these sons of bitches who tease me so harshly with these musical collaborations to actually come to fruition. I have two in mind here, because I, like, I posted these things to Facebook and they came up in my memories, one of them being a collaboration with Brian May and Tony Iommi. Mm-hmm. And the last and the second one being the collaboration that was teased to me between Devin Townsend and Mikel Ackerfeld from Opeth. I want these things. These are things I want. How, how, how I, I'm 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 missing how these were teased at to you. It was it was teased like as in like I think even I think specifically the the Devin Townsend one and Mikel Ackerfeld one was teased like via social media like they were working together mm-hmm. like they actually talked about it like Devin Townsend said like you know I'm writing this material I'm thinking about working with Mikel Ackerfeld like this is stuff that was you know teased to me you know and this is years ago. Like, at least two. Two. But you can't have this. No. No. I can't. I totally can't, and I want it. It's shit I want. And I'm sure the, the Tony Omi brian May thing, they've been talking about that for, like, 15 years. But still, there, there, was like, there was, like, a specific article that hinted at it, like, being, like, an eventuality. Not a possibility, but an eventuality. And it still hasn't come to fruition. So any time that these guys tease me like this... I want these things. In all fairness. No, fuck you. In all fairness. Fuck you. <laughs> Devin Townsend and Mikhail Ackerfeld have worked together before on the human equation. Yeah. Was it, was it, wasn't Devin Townsend the one that, that didn't that even show up? Like, they sent him stuff? He wrote his own stuff. Yeah, he wrote his own stuff, and he, he just kind of sent it back via, like, you know, mail. Yeah. So they didn't really work together. Yeah, they worked together. <laughs> semantics <laughs> semantics semantics still things I want is, for, is fucking completion of these little fucking teases giving me no, blue they're, balls they're gonna tease you to the end of days blue balls forever so you have nothing you want no, I, I couldn't think of anything this week I, I tried to like while I was working at work today I was like I haven't thought of anything crap but uh, I was I was too distracted, so. Bummer. Okay. <clears throat> we are going to concert news. Ready for some festival news? Yes. Zach Sabbath have been announced as the headliner for this year's The Power of the Riff Festival, which has been booked for August 31st at the Fonda Theater in Los Angeles, California. The Roxidus. Music Festival, which was scheduled to take place July 11th through the 14th at Evendale Airport, which is 90 minutes north of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, has been canceled. The four-day event was slated to include headlining performances by Aerosmith, Kid Rock, Nickelback, and Leonard Skinner. Roxidus organizers announced the cancellation in a social media post earlier, Wednesday, July 3rd. They wrote... During the past couple of months, our venue at Evendale Airport has battled tremendous rainy weather that has impacted our ability to produce the festival. It is with a heavy heart that we announced this cancellation of the Roxas Music Music Festival this year. Our team has worked tirelessly to find a solution in which the show can go on, but unfortunately we cannot make it happen this year. I'm just imagining like the entire place is like covered in mud, like like sinking mud like they came and built the stage kind of mud I like the stadium it's just (laughs) burnt down fell over then sank into the swamp 
All right, Creator has replaced Megadeth on the billing of the Santiago Gets Louder Festival, which is scheduled to take place on October 6th in Santiago, Chile. Joining them at the event will be headliner Slayer, along with Anthrax and Chilean extreme metal pioneers Pentagram. Most of Megadeth's previously announced 2019 tour dates have been canceled as Dave Mustaine undergoes treatment for his recently diagnosed pussy cancer, uh, pussy throat cancer. Where is that pussy cancer anyway? Yeah, cancer. You suck. Exodus, Cataclysm, Battlecross, and more have been booked for this year's Slaughter Q, which will be held at the Masquerade in Atlanta, Georgia on September 21st. That sounds pretty badass. Right? Hair in the Fair Festival. What? That sounds like something you make up. Hair in the Fair Festival, which was scheduled to take place July 11th through the 14th in Welland, Ontario, Canada. They have not been having any luck this particular weekend in Canada for festivals. Because this one has been canceled as well. Organizers announced on Thursday that they were pulling the plug on the event, quote, due to financial hardship and extremely low ticket sales. Uh, yeah. A message on the festival's official website reads, quote, We deeply regret this announcement as we were looking forward to a great event for all. In times of economic hardship, it is hard to regain stability to provide a properly executed event, unquote. Hair in the Fair was slated to include performances from a number of 1980s rock bands like L.A. Guns, Rat, Quiet Riot, Helix, Anvil, Zvengali, and Warrant. Last month, Several acts pulled out of the festival, including Vince Neil and Sebastian Bach, with Bach saying on social media that the cancellation was the result of the promoter not meeting contractual obligations. That means you probably wanted money. Probably. But, like, three days of hair bands? No. Yeah. No, you do one day, because nobody wants three days of hair bands. Yeah. Nobody wanted an entire decade of hair bands. Yeah. But we got it anyway, and, 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 yeah. Yeah, extremely low ticket sales. Yeah, no. Yeah. No. All right, you ready for some touring news? Uh, real touring news? Yes. Okay. Baroness have scheduled a new round of acoustic in-store performances around their summer tour. None here. Of course. Niall will embark on a European headlining tour in September. Support on the 25-date trek will come from Hate Eternal, Vitrol, and Omophagia. I want to stick with that. Yeah, that sounds about right. When he's not busy touring and recording with Anthrax, Jolie Belladonna plays drums and sings for a classic rock covers band called Chief Big Way. The upstate New York-based band, which also features Dave Meckelson on bass, Joe Precourt on guitar and John Goodwin on keyboards plays versions of songs from Journey, ACDC, ZZ Top, Boston, Cheap Trick, Foreigner, Pink Floyd, Van Halen, Collective Soul, The Who, The Doors, Shinedown, and Bon Jovi, among others. Chief Big Way has uh, scheduled several tour dates for the New York area over the coming months. So definitely no San Antonio day. Yeah, it's all New York. Like upstate. I think they're, I think they're performing on Long Island at one point. Cataclysm, Whitechapel, Flesh God Apocalypse, and Disintegrate. Oh, Discarnate? Discarnate. Discarnate, sorry, my bad. Uh, comprise the bill of this year's edition of the annual European UK Metal uh, MTV Headbangers, Tall, a bit Headbangers Ball Tour. They still have a Headbangers Ball Tour, but not a show, Headbangers Ball. And you notice that's also just in Europe and UK. Of course. Dragon Force have announced new live dates in the United States, Canada, and Europe starting in the fall of 2019 and continuing through early 2020. None here. That's how long it takes them to play one song. So many notes. So many notes. So many notes. Slayer will set off on the, quote, the final campaign, the seventh and final leg of its farewell world tour. This last hurrah will start at the Explore Asheville Arena in Asheville, North Carolina and see the band taking its goodbye bow at the Los Angeles Forum on Saturday, November 30th. William's birthday. 
According uh, company Slayer on this last ride are Primus, Ministry, and Philip H. Anselmo and the Illegals performing a vulgar display of Pantera. And they will be on all dates. Right on. I mean, one of these shows is definitely going to end up get, being recorded for a Slayer DVD. More than likely. So. More than likely. I just like the the combination of Slayer and Primus. <laughs> I know, that's so fucking great. That's so fucking great. I, 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 I don't know what, what the fans think of it, but, I mean, that's a great combination. No, I think Prime is one of, those, one of those bands that everybody likes. Or that they can just cross over genres, like, pretty easily. You know? Or they don't need to cross over genres. They just, they're just weird enough that everyone's kind of just drawn to them. Yeah. But to see them like sandwiched in between fucking Ministry and and Slayer, that's that's pretty intense. Yeah. All right, Ghost has announced the fall 2019 European leg of the Ultimate Tour named Death. The trek will launch on November 16th in Nottingham, UK, and will end on December 19th in Toulouse, France. Support on the tour will come from All Them Witches and Tribulation. I love that name, All Them Witches. Right. All them witches. Witches, bitches. All them witches is crazy. <laughs> I got that witch a cauldron. <laughs> witches love cauldrons. <laughs> Just move on. <laughs> Just move on. You're welcome. <laughs> they see me growling. <laughs> You are on the worst roll today. <laughs> <laughs> but you fucking love it and you know it. You just... Mm. You're, you're, you're rolling into the muds of Canada right now. <laughs> Growling. Growling. <laughs> Sonata Arctica will embark on the Raven Still Flies Over Europe tour in the fall. Support on the trek will... Uh, bleh, support on the trek... Which will kick off on November 11th in Stockholm, Sweden. Will come from Edge of Paradise and Temple Balls. <laughs> temple balls. Big balls. <laughs> like we're talking like Temple <laughs> Balls here. Uh, I really want to know if that was like a typo. Yeah. And like their, their name is actually Temple Bells. <laughs> <laughs> but one guy at Blabbermouth was like, no, 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 no. Temple ball. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right, you ready for one-offs? Uh, we got one one-off here. I, I don't know if I am, but... All right, on. anyway, metal, metal and comics will once again come together as one at the fifth and. Anim- no, I'm sorry. The 50th, not 5th, 50th anniversary of San Diego Comic Con International with a special live performance from Exodus. The intimate event, dubbed Bonded by, Bonded by Con, will take place on Thursday, July 18th at the House of Blues. This evening with Exodus is the official Nuclear Blast Comic Con kickoff party sponsored by Court of the Dead, Stern Pinball, and Rebellion Republic. Stay tuned for more announcements from Nuclear Blast and everybody else involved for their booth number 501 coming soon. They probably got a sweet booth if they're going to have Exodus there. Maybe they'll have Exodus signing stuff. Right. That'd be sweet. And of course, the question, of course, with any of these is, is Gary Holt going to be there? And the answer is probably not because he's got to finish this seventh and final leg of the farewell tour for Slayer. Seventh and final. Final, maybe. Final. Almost. Final, maybe. Except all those one-off performances they do in festivals throughout the rest of their career. And that tour they're doing with Temple Balls. <laughs> <laughs> Balls. All right. You ready for some heavy metal in the charts? Uh, Probably hey, not. Hey. Probably, Probably not. not. But there are some noteworthy points here. Marilyn Manson and Hail Storm have new reason to celebrate with the revelation of new platinum and gold plaques headed their way. Marilyn Manson's cover of This is Halloween from the 1993 film The Nightmare Before Christmas was certified gold by the RIAA on June, 6th, uh, June 26th. Meanwhile, Hellstorm's hit single I Miss the Misery off their 2012 album The Strange Case Of has officially gone platinum as of June 28th. 
The track previously went gold back on December 14th of 2015. Right on. Good for them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Although I, I've, I don't think I've ever heard the Manson version of This is Halloween. It's actually really good. Really good. Mm-hmm. All right, are you ready for the top 200? I'm ready for the I, I am disappointed in the world as a whole with the number one. Okay. It's an album called Indigo by Chris Brown. Yeah, I'm disappointed. Very disappointed. Like, why is he still able to do this? Considering, like, you know, what he's done. Well, it's considering he's he's trash? Yeah, just complete and utter trash. Yeah, this... this because people are ridiculous and yeah. they like bad things? Yeah, just terrible. Terrible, terrible. Anyway, number two, Little Nas X. He's got a, an EP called Seven. Number three is Billie Eilish, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Number four is a new album by the Black Keys called Let's Rock. And number five is a new album from Chance the Rapper named Acid Rap. Okay. Yeah. And now we scroll. Yes. Yes. We scroll. Diamonds by Elton John is at number 19, which is badass. Probably getting that that bump from the uh, Rocket Man movie still. Yeah. Which I haven't seen. I still want to see. It's probably out of theaters by now, unfortunately. Anyway, Bohemian Rhapsody soundtrack's at number 25. Number 25. And here we go. Clear Edens, Clearwater Revival is at number 49. Um, From 56 just, last week. Let me just put some music to this. Okay, a re-entry here at number 51 is the Best of Everything, which is Tom Petty and Heartbreakers, re-entry at 51. Queen's Greatest Hits is at number 55, Journey's Greatest Hits, number 59. The new Bruce Springsteen record is at number 60. A re-entry from Santana, Africa Speaks, is at number 61. I have no idea what that is. No idea. Abbey Road is at 67. Yeah, this sucks. I'm fire with the clips today. Guns N' Roses Greatest Hits is at number 96. The all-time greatest hits of Leonard Skinner is at number 98. A re-entry at number 101 from Fleetwood Mac. Rumors. Re-entry at 101. Back in Black is at number 119. Blah, 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 blah. Sublime. Self-titled. 131. Ah, fuck that. Where's the Metallica record? Because I know that there, there should be a. I think they're above ACDC usually. It should be above Sublime. Anyway, because I keep scrolling past it. Here's a re-entry out of nowhere at 149. Metallica's Hardwired to Self-Destruct. Ah, oh, sweet. Yeah. I wonder if it's because of concert sales, because they usually give their albums away when they sell tickets. Probably. Uh, the Hot Rocks Rolling Stone Collection is at 161. Led Zeppelin Mothership is at 162. The Dirt soundtrack by Motley Crue has a re entry at 169. Five Finger Death Punch of Decorated Destruction is a re entry at 178. Still got your six. Always got your six. Always got your six. The Rolling Stones album Honk is at 181. The greatest hits of Bon Jovi is at 182. The greatest hits of Hall and Oates. Okay. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Apparently, uh, Tom York from Radiohead has a new album out called Anima. Or Anima. 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 Whatever. It's a new album that debuts at number 187. Tom York. Uh, 
Bob York. Uh, Willie Nelson has a record out. I guess it's relatively new. Yes, it is. It was. Uh, it's been two weeks on the charts, and it was at 18 last week. Is at number 194 this week. A little bit of a nosedive. Damn. Close out the number 200 spot here. At number 200 is a reentry, the greatest hits 1974 to 1978 by. The Steve Miller Band. Nah. I really don't like Steve Miller. All right, you ready to be disappointed in this one? Yeah. yeah. Well, I already know what's, what's going to be at the top. Yeah, anyway, number 25 is the best Nickelback Volume 1. Apparently, they're expecting more volumes. I am surprised. Didn't that go down? It, it, it was actually at number 23 last week. Oh, it's going away. Which means it was probably a re-entry last week. Or the week before, whatever. Anyway, as a re-entry here is Three Days Grace at 1X. Another re-entry here is Toxicity by System of a Down. We got the self-titled Rage Against the Machine album at 22. We have a re-entry of 10 by Pearl Jam. Yeah, that one keeps coming back. It's random. Meteora by Linkin Park is at number 20. All the Right Reasons, Nickelback is at number 19. Zeppelin IV, number 18. Experience Hendrix, The Best of Jimi Hendrix by Jimi Hendrix, 17. Grace Hits 1, 2, and 3, The Platinum Collection is at number 16. But that's Queen, by the way. Foo Fighters, Grace Hits, number 15. Don't say it. It's grown on up from uh, number 17. <laughs> Eat a dick. All right, number 14 is The Greatest Hits by Three Doors Down. Number 13 is Hybrid Theory, Linkin Park. Number 12 is a re-entry, the story so far, the best of Def Leppard. Number 11 is The Black Album. And this will be explained why it's not on the top 200, because it's below Aerosmith's Greatest Hits at number 10 and Bon Jovi's Greatest Hits at number 9. A Decade of Destruction, Five Finger Death Punch is at number eight. A Reentry, The Dirt Soundtrack is at number seven. Mothership, Led Zeppelin, number six. Metallica's Hardwired to Self Destruct is at number five. Uh, back in Black, Metallic, uh, blah, 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 sorry, Back in Black, ACDC is at number four. Greatest Hits, Guns N' Roses, number three. Greatest Hits, Queen, number two. And Bohemian Rhapsody soundtrack is at number one. That's right. They will never leave. N- nope. <laughs> and just look how happy he is. <laughs> Now, that's either Freddie Mercury laughing in his grave or Brian May laughing all the way to the bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Or both. <laughs> all right. So, I don't think we have a discussion point. So, I think we're going to call it there because Warrior needs sleep. Badly. Yes, for fucking real. So until next time, I'm Dan Mack. And this is Chris Mack. And we are The Slime.